I'm sure the um, the importance of the sand soundscape alongside the landscape. Can you talk a little bit about um, your relationship because it is a piece of art, as the gardens are a piece of art, and how that all comes together. Yeah, the um, I mean, thanks for saying that. And um, no, I, I think I always. I mean, it really did. So Lauren's music was one of, when I first came back. The first time I went to Holland to shoot with Pete, and I came back with some footage. And I thought I got to put this together and see what there could be. And initially, I, the idea was, I just thought maybe it'd be a short piece about his garden in Holland or something. I mean, it didn't. Re I didn't know what it was going to become. Um, so that mu seeing it with that music really, I thought, helped a lot and gave me an idea about how how much further that could go. Um, and then the story of meeting, getting the original music is just a good story. But um, and. Somerset, where Pete was doing the garden, where I just coincidentally was, I happened to be shooting from start to finish of that project, so it just became this thread that could go through the film. But when I was at um, Somerset one time, and there's also an artist residency program that happens there, and the first artists in residence were the, um, the Roth studio. Dieter Roth is the Swiss artist, and um, his son and grandson now run the studio. He's no longer alive. Um, and they, they do a lot of stuff with Hauser and Worth, but I don't know if you've been to any of the, the like the gallery here in New York, but they have this bar um, that's just built out of stuff, and it's crazy, and they are crazy, um, but talented, but really, uh, you know, lunatics in a way. Um, <laughs> they were sort of terrorizing the town of Bruton as they were in residence, but. Um, <laughs> At one point, and so in the bar they have, it's just a, like I said, a bunch of stuff, but there's t old TV monitors stuck in the bar and they just have video looping on it. And I was talking to Oda Roth, who's the grandson, and at some point I said, oh, I, I, I need music and, you know, do you have some ideas? Or we were just kicking around some ideas and he said, oh, no, I've got the guy for you. And I said, great. And he said, yeah, yeah, wait. And then he pointed to the monitor and he said, he's going to come up any second now. And then at one point he said, there he is, that's the guy. And it, he was passed out drunk on his back, <laughs> just lying there. And I was like, okay, great, that's the guy. <laughs> but he turned out to be David, who sent me, you know, once I did get in touch with him, he sent me a bunch of music. Um, I mean, that makes it sound easy. It was like one track would come, and then he was, you know, he's maybe passed out a lot of the time. But um, <laughs> anyhow, I got it. It was great stuff. But at some point, I just realized, like, it's not, I'm, this could take forever. Mm -hmm. And that's when I turned to um, my dear friend Charlie, and I said, you know, I think I need some help with the music. And then, and that became uh, an amazing experience, because then it was like, you know, by then the, the movie existed to a large mm -hmm. extent, so we could actually just score it. And that, mm -hmm. that, I seldom get the luxury to do that, so that was amazing. So I guess what I would say is just uh, trying to take Pete's cue um, of how flowers and plants develop over the seasons and trying to translate that into the sounds that hopefully ended up in the score. Just what are autumnal sounds? You know, what are summer sounds? And, and trying to, to make that happen and, and find um, other players like Jim White, who I, I really, uh, he's my drum hero. So um, he has like this palette of sounds that, that somehow for me um, was very seasonal. Congratulations, I think it, I mean, I'm sure you all agree the soundscape is just, it really, you, you are taken through the seasons, absolutely, so wonderful. Um, how was it working with Pete? <laughs> I know, I, I, it was great. I mean, it, yeah, he, he seems to have a reputation for, I mean, he's Dutch, I'll say that. So he's, you know, he's sort of reticent. And I did come back from that first shoot and I thought, well, he didn't say a whole lot, so maybe I'm going to have to get all these other people to speak on his behalf. I mean, he works with Noel Kingsbury, who's in the movie a lot, to, to, to write books basically for him or with him. Um, but, uh, you know, there's something... And then when I started showing it to people, they all just wanted to listen to Pete. I mean, I don't know, there's something... You know, he has a certain charisma um, that keeps you engaged. Um, but, no, I think he's... He's very... You know, he works in a particular way and that whole thing of like he's just alone in his studio and there's no, it's not an office, there's not a staff, there's not other people around. I mean, it, it appears to be this very controlling, exacting thing, but he's really, 
he's really only controlling about the part that he wants to do. So he actually works with, he has a lot of relationships with landscape architecture firms and he lets, you know, they handle everything else besides the, the gardens. Um, and he really, they all say, like, it's great to work with him because he doesn't, you know, it's just the plants. That's all he wants to worry about. Everything else, he's not, you know, he doesn't start micromanaging things. And it was the same, like, shooting with him. It was the same. He wasn't, like, telling me what to do or what to shoot or, you know, it was very, like, he would come out while I was just wandering around the garden, and then he would kind of chat for a while. And um, but he's great. I know we got to be we got to be good friends. He was a really he was very different from a lot of subjects where he would call me and say, "I'm going to Texas. You should come," or "I'm going to Pennsylvania." You know, like instead of having to sort of pull teeth out of people to find out what interesting things are happening. So that was great. I mean, it was re it really made for a much better experience in terms of... And that of Texas drive was just stunning. Yeah, it yeah, was pretty great. Fantastic. Um, so I'm going to open it straight out to the audience now. Um, we have about 10 minutes for Q&A. So um, if you have... I have m m many more questions, but I'd love to hear from you, as I'm sure yeah. you'd like to hear from the audience. You do. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, Did you hear that? Why does Pete take all the photos and what does he do with all the photos? He, um, it's just an obsession, I think. I mean, I think he really, it's like he, he just can't get enough of the plants. Like he can't, he never gets tired of them. His own or like the, all these trips he goes on, that's literally what he does with his free time. He just travels around to look at other plants. Um, and taking pictures, I think, is just a way of him of him recording all that. But he's very particular about the photographs as well. But that was how we, when we met, we were having, we had a beer at a bar, and he was just showing me photograph after photograph after photo, I mean, literally hundreds of them. And, um, but it was a great way to sort of take it all in and to get an idea of how, I mean, his books, you know, as you gave me that book early on, it's, it's, the, it's very, um, those are mostly his photographs in the book. So it's a particular way of seeing it, which I guess helped me to think about how to shoot it as well. No, I mean, she's, you know, as she's an integral part of the whole thing. But she's also very, I mean, it was impossible to get her in the movie. Like, that whole trip to the Arboretum in Belgium was basically like a stunt to make her, like, she loves that place and the people there know her. And so um, I was just, I just kept saying, like, we got to figure out a way to, like, make her be on camera and be in the movie. And um, I thought that ended up turning out great. But she, you know, I think, it's, she lets him do the creative stuff, but she would, she used to manage the nursery. She was basically like the business manager of the nursery when they had the nursery. And now she, um, it's open to the public, their garden. And so she kind of handles the whole like social aspect of taking people around or taking, take, you know, she charges like they charge three euros or something, I think to visit and she puts out tea and coffee. And so she's very like, she's sort of an interface with it. And, um, but they don't, sort of design together. I mean, she's not involved in that process, but but it wouldn't, none of it would happen without her, clearly. So, next question in the back there. The lady with the glasses, yeah, just say. Yes. Um, do you think that he's been influenced by, um, by the American native plants in America? So he's worked with his friend. I want to know if it's... Yeah. Do you, do you need to repeat the question? Um, was Pete influenced by the native plants, the native American plants? I think that's that's a fascinating question, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, well, I, whenever I screen it for like hor garden audiences I always have to, I feel like I have to confess that I'm not a gardener. So to like <laughs> come clean. And there's, I know, I saw Rebecca, I think somewhere, I know there's people in here who could answer this like in a very knowledgeable way. But, um, but what I did learn in making, you know, what I do know now about plants, it's, um, you know, a lot of the North American plants came, were, became garden plants by going to Europe and being used in gardens in Europe. And there's, 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 it's a pretty fascinating, like, a whole st history of this kind wow. of planting or whatever. And there's a, a guy who appears very briefly in the movie, but we actually 
spent a lot of time with them, and there's a bunch of footage I wish I could have gotten in, but Cassian Schmidt, who runs a garden in Germany called Hermannshof, that is kind of, it's both a research garden, but it's just this staggeringly beautiful place as well. But he, I learned a lot from him about how a lot of these, there were a lot of German uh, garden people, horticulturalists, who were, who were using these Native American, um, yeah, North American native plants and using them over there, and then they sort of have now made their way back. I mean, I think the Lurie Garden was a big part of that, um, you know, like taking the prairie and replanting it in Chicago. I mean, the idea of it at least, but. Yes, the gentleman there. Okay. The gentleman. Beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Coming from a cinematographer. <laughs> No, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've, I guess I, I, mean, I started out working on films about visual artists and then started making films about architecture and architects. Um, and I had done a film about Diller Scafidio and Renfro, which is the architecture firm that was like the design architects for the High Line. And so that sort of led to meeting Pete kind of indirectly. Um, and uh, so there was like a, a connection, but it was really... You know, it was more, and then I, re I think it was just responding to his work more aesthetically. I mean, I, like not as a gardener. I mean, I'd been in a couple of his gardens by that point, um, the Lurie Garden in Chicago, and just feeling like something, like it, it just made me feel a certain way that was like, you know, looking at a painting or I don't, you know, not to be too literal about it, but there was some response to it that way that I thought was interesting and thought might be worth trying to pursue a little bit more, but. And there was another question. Yes. Yeah, did I, I, <laughs> I hope I did. Um, no, no, I know what you mean, yeah, and no, I think, well, and, and I think ultimately, and again, when I confess that I'm not a gardener, it's also because I'm not, it's not a movie like to show you how to garden. Um, and so what I, it's not, <laughs> all, you know, maybe a, that would have been a more lucrative thing to do, I don't know, but um, it's, it, you know, for me, and similar to like the idea of other films, I mean, for me, it's always like I'm just fascinated by the creative, like people who make something out of nothing. And I think it's and so that's always what's really interesting me. Um, but I will say that Pete's, you know, the idea of finding beauty in things that aren't beautiful or that whole tension. Um, I think I've always been really drawn to, you know, like I find that pretty attractive and I hope that trying to push like the way I make movies, I guess, to be looser. And, you know, and that, I think, is something that I was inspired by or tried to emulate or tried to keep finding ways to do that, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. I think we only have time for one more question. Um, so, yeah. No, yeah, as I was saying, like, he's really not, he, he, yeah, he has a reputation for being very controlling, but it's very specific what he wants to control, and, um, and he wasn't that way at all, and it was more, I was trying to find, you know, and I think in, like, the way that the movie is structured, I was, it was trying to, you know, like, it, the, the camera's moving around a lot in the beginning of the movie, I mean, it's trying to be, like, I was trying to figure out how to shoot it. And it took a while to figure, and part of that was seeing Pete's photographs, like it really helped me. He very rarely has photographs with any sort of um, context or frame in them, like a horizon or buildings or, you know, it's always just an abstract composition of the plants themselves. And that, that was a big help in terms of trying to see it a little bit like he does, so. What's your next plans for film? Um, 
Well, this hopefully is, I mean, it, it is, you know, there'll be a festival run. We'll see how it goes, but yeah. And then, and then um, no, I'm working with Jim, um, who's being really, you know, it's, it's incredible, but the idea that of, um, to do have uh, a theatrical release next spring, summer, May, June, um, and then- Or winter. Fall, yeah. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> the dead of winter didn't seem to be the right time for that, but, um, yeah, so to, to have it um, maybe so limited theaters. Are then people also following your Facebook or how can Well, that's my job help? now, right? I mean, there are people who are, and the, it, it's really helpful that Pete has such a big fan base yeah. himself, um, but it's like building that audience between now and then, and then to try and do a bunch of um, you know event screenings, one-off screenings, outdoor screenings through the summer. So that's, that's the ambition, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. The festival goes on until Thursday. Thank you, Thomas. Thanks thank very you, much, Charles. Maxine.